Serving Guam for 80 years, Matson and the Yadai Itano program. Harley Davidson of Guam, visit our new showroom now located on Route 8 in Mighty. IP&E fueling excellence. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it. And King's Restaurant, located in Tamuning and Dededo. Always open, always local. Coming up on Prime Time, the man accused in the 2017 double homicide here in Harmon strikes a plea deal with the government. Also tonight, a couple has been placed under arrest for allegedly forcing an 11-year-old girl to have sex. And court documents detail what prompted a former co-worker in the Blue House Lounge case to return to the island before being deported again. Hi there, everybody. Thanks so much for watching us live on KUM TV and streaming us on Facebook Live. Well, a deal has been reached tonight as Joseph Sagdal is set to enter a guilty plea in the 2017 double homicide here in Harmon that tragically claimed the lives of two people. But as KUAM's Nick Delgado reports, the defendant's family argues he's an innocent man. Indicted on two counts of aggravated murder, it seems Joseph Sagdell is going for the government's plea agreement. It was in December of last year near the Himlani Apartments in Harmon. Sagdell, a shooting instructor, claims he was hit in the face with a slingshot for unknown reasons. He chased down his attackers with his gun in hand. Shots fired, bullets hitting and killing Broki Tommaso and Avi Marichong. Yes, he did commit something, but it was forced upon him to commit that crime. William Shutner says Sagdal is his future son-in-law. It's a very stressful situation. He walked out of the courthouse Tuesday morning clearly upset. He's innocent. They shot him. What would you do if you got shot in the face? Sagdal has been detained for nearly a year, held on a half a million dollars cash bail. I feel that he's being railroaded by the government. It's not right. That we got people that did murder and they're still out at their house pending pending uh, their appeal. They wouldn't even let him out, even with Mr. Luhan's help of uh, p p putting the bail money up. Defense attorney David Luhan made repeated attempts to get his client out of jail. The court has since denied his motion to post property in lieu of the $500,000 cash bail. We would have put up our house, our land, even the mother would have put up their house and land to help him, but it's not enough. But with Mr. Luhan's help, it was more than enough. We don't know what happened. Specifics of the plea deal have not yet been made public. Shutner, however, shares the few details he's learned. They're offering him a plea deal so he can get out of jail within 10 years or something. And that's not right because anybody in their right mind would rather take the plea deal than spend the rest of their life behind bars. They're offering up a plea agreement for manslaughter. If they're going to have a plea agreement for him for manslaughter, then he must be innocent. So why would you even consider manslaughter if you know it's murder? Sagdal has since asserted self-defense. He also gave a written statement to police admitting, quote, I felt as though I shouldn't have used my gun in this situation, but I was afraid for my life. I regret not resolving this another way. So why take the government's deal instead of fighting it at trial? So, uh, he would have a chance to come out and see the rest of his life. This boy was going to college and everything else, you know. Shunter hopes it's ultimately a good deal for Sagdal. He's back in court Thursday morning for his change of plea hearing. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahusi Nick Delgado. And now to a story that's incredibly disturbing as a mother has been accused of holding down an 11-year-old girl while her boyfriend would allegedly sexually assault the child. 41-year-old Xavier Joss has been charged with three counts of first-degree criminal and child abuse. 34-year-old Evelyn Albert has been charged with first-degree criminal sexual conduct and child abuse. Police say the child reported the alleged sexual attacks to officials at her school with court documents stating the woman even recorded her boyfriend allegedly having sex with a child on a mobile phone. The suspect threatened to kill the victim if she told anyone. The case was handled by GPD's domestic assault response team with authorities working with Child Protective Services and Healing Hearts on the inquiry to ensure the safety and care of the victim as well as the victim's siblings. It was a mistake. This according to the U.S. Attorney's Office in a sentencing memorandum for Sacknin Wiria, one of the women convicted in the Blue House Lounge brothel case. Wiria, as reported, was caught trying to re-enter Guam after being deported last year. Court documents state Wiria's sister believes she could come back because her case was closed and passport returned. Due to the unique circumstances, federal prosecutors are recommending the court give her the lower end of the 8 to 14 months Wiria faces. Sentencing is set for January 9th. As reported on Instagram last night, firefighters responded to a blaze at a 40-foot container home Monday night up in Dededo. The fire on Talancota was reported just after 10.15 p.m., with GFD saying it was under control a little bit after 10.30. No occupants were found at the scene and no injuries were reported. Engines 12 and 14 and the Rescue Unit 1 did respond. The case is open. 
New images posted on social media show the plane that crashed that we've told you about over the weekend. The Federal Aviation Administration and the National Transportation Safety Board say they are still investigating what caused the Cessna to land in the trees at Arodi Point. The company Trend Vector Aviation remains silent while the crash is under investigation, but officials tell us they are glad the pilot and passenger were able to walk away from the incident safely. All right, everybody, we are going to take a quick commercial break. Welcome back, by the way. Thank you. It's good to be back. Yeah, it has been a while. Well it's done. been a while since we both shared this. Man, I, got, I was missing you. Aw, yeah. I missed you too. Well, we are going to be back with more news, so please stay tuned. There are more ways to experience Guam via KUAM News, giving you what you want, when you want, and how you want it. From smart devices, Alexa, what's in the news? Here's your flash briefing. Over the web, on mobile, on streaming platforms, with immersive, interactive formats, and via social media where it's more than just content, it's conversation. More ways to keep you informed and entertained whenever you want it, wherever you are, on whatever device you're using. value relationships because when we commit I love you God until you're 80 until you're 90 until you're 100 forever we are in it for the long run so you can enjoy the moments that matter because when we commit to relationships we never stop caring Calvo's Select Care, health care that is always there for you. Federal employees and annuitants enroll today. These are our islands, and this is our Laddie Stone. This is what we stand for and who we are. For more than 35 years, we delivered connections that matter throughout the Marianas. First, via radio link, then by fiber optic cable. We launched the region's first 4G LTE network and continue to make our network faster and stronger. Telecommunications change the way our islands interact with the world, but not the heart behind those interactions. IT&E. Explore your world. This year is rapidly coming to an end, and the big finish is now on at Cars Plus and Mighty. Get big year-end deals on a big selection of new Ram trucks with savings up to $10,500. Or save up to $5,500 on a new Chrysler Pacifica. How about a new Jeep Compass? Save up to $5,000. With financing as low as 1.99%. Plus, receive a Cars Plus Shell Value Card with every vehicle purchase. The big finish means big savings right now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Be merry, be bright, and make shopping all right with holiday gift cards from Chuck E. Cheese's Guam, Ruby Tuesday, and King's Restaurants. Receive special offers with every purchase for extra holiday happiness. See stores for details and have fun this season from all of us at the GFS Group. And right off the bat, coming back, Guamanians for fair government is no more. Andre Bainham, the head of the Political Action Committee, notified the GEC of his intention to dissolve the organization. Well, meetings for Fair Government supported a writing the campaign for the Uggen Limtiako team, as you well know. Bainham Z is subject of a CSC mini hatch act violation complaint, alleging he broke the law by endorsing and supporting a political campaign, as well as soliciting and handling donations for that matter. When asked if his dissolving of the group had anything to do with the complaint filed against him, Bainham said it did not. He tells KUM the dissolved PAC will not be involved in future elections, with CSC Chief Pete Cavill saying the investigation into Bainham has been completed and will be forwarded to commissioners for review during their January 29th meeting. Calvo also states, quote, it was a lengthy investigation, adding the complaint against Bainham is still valid even if his political action committee has been dissolved. It is bon voyage for the Guam Election Commission as Executive Director Maria Pangolinan and staff head off island to attend two conferences. The GEC will attend the Council of State Government Cybersecurity Conference in Kentucky, and then it's off to Philadelphia for the Council of Government Ethics and Laws Conference. Pangolinan says attending the Cybersecurity Conference will give the GEC valuable insight into how to carry out the 2020 elections. We hope to be able to uh, buy new tabulation equipment for 2020. So we want to make sure we look at all the aspects, including cybersecurity, as we begin the procurement process for the tabulation equipment. Pangolinan and her staff leave Wednesday morning and will jump into sessions right off the plane in Kentucky. After three days in Kentucky, it's on to the next conference where the GEC will attend campaign finance seminars. Pangolinan says while the GEC may not necessarily adopt and mirror stateside procedures, there will be valuable takeaways. More so to 
localize what's be best practices for Guam. The trip is 100% federally funded. Well, the Commission on Decolonization is another government entity preparing for the transition to a new inbound administration. Incoming Governor-elect Lulian Grell will be able to select new appointees, but the representatives for the three political status task forces, being statehood, independence, and free association, will remain intact. They sought to ensure continuity for a planned decolonization conference next year, voting Dr. Michael Bivakwa to chair the committee that is preparing for it. Here's Commission Member Adrian Cruz. I think the, the worry, especially for those of us that are going to stay on, is that, you know, if, if we have a totally different team and then it takes another direction, then it's, it might defeat the whole purpose of, mm -hmm. of what we're trying to achieve. So as long as one person from the, uh, uh, one permanent member of the task force stays on, I think that that's a lot better than uh, just making it an interim, which, you know, has the potential to change things drastically. Well, the, the current Commission on Decolonization meets for the final time the day after New Year's. The former head of the local health department, James Gillen, steps back into a leadership role. He's been tapped to once again be public health director. Gillen retired back in February at the time, saying he was ending his six years as director due to a lack of funding and implementation of the medical cannabis program. His deputy, Leo Casil, took his place, but KUAM has confirmed he retired last week Friday. According to the governor's office, Gillen will work with the team of Governor-elect Lulian Guerrero and Lieutenant Governor-elect Josh Tenorio to ensure a smooth transition. Public health officials confirm Gillen is currently off island. Tom Nadeau, chief environmental public health officer, is serving as acting director until Gillen returns next week. More Guam news is coming up in just a moment, but first let's check in with KSPN2 News in Saipan for some regional headlines. Half a day Guam, here's what's making news in the CNMI. The first session has ended and the second session has just begun here at Coblerville Elementary School. This is one of nine schools who is starting back their first day of classes since Super Typhoon U2. Hey guys, are you guys excited to be back in school? Yes! We love school! Yeah. <laughs> How do you guys feel about starting back school today? Um, excited. <laughs> I feel yeah, okay. scared. Yeah. Horrible. <laughs> Anybody super excited that school's back in session? Yes. Those are some of the reactions from students at Culberville Elementary School who had their first day back in the classroom. I see that a lot of students are excited to be back. Um, it's just uh, getting a sense of normalcy. You know, everybody I know struggled and um, just to, you know, be with their classmates, be with their, be with their friends and, you know, um, come back to school. I think they're pretty happy to be here. Having one building holding nine classrooms get destroyed during Super Typhoon U2, Culberville Elementary School is split up into two sessions. We're double session right now. Uh, we have kinder through second grade in the morning along with one fourth grade class. And then in the afternoon we have kinder PM sessions through uh, third through fifth grade. And uh, morning sessions are 7.30 to 11.30. Afternoon sessions are 12 o'clock to 4 o'clock. Getting students back into a somewhat normal course with their studies since the super typhoon. I'd say it's pretty important because uh, it gets their mind off of uh, all the stress at home. Um, they're able to interact with their classmates and they can avail to free uh, breakfast and lunch and um, snacks here at school. Also, um, it's good to you know get them back on course with their studies and their reading so that they can still achieve even though if we had this uh, disaster. Reporting at Coblerville Elementary School, I'm Ashley McDowell, KSPN2. Watch these top stories and more at SaipanTV.com. For KSPN2, I'm Adriana Cotero. One month after Super Typhoon U2 devastated our neighbors up north, officials are reporting progress. Governor Ralph Torres saying recovery in the Marianas is moving swiftly, while island residents here in Guam continue to donate. Carmen Terlaki has the story. Over the weekend, Zita Pangalinen, president of the Haza Foundation, took a short trip up north to send more relief to Tinian, visiting with families still recovering only a month after being caught in the eye of Super Typhoon U2. You know, physically, things are moving along. There's great energy, and people are really coming together to clean and clear things up. But I can tell that the trauma that everyone has experienced 
is really still hovering. This week, she's sending seeds for families to start growing fresh fruit and vegetables. Working with the Tinian Women's Association, the local nonprofit has serviced over 500 families or over 2,000 people. Pangolinen says school is back in session, and though many are still in shock, life is slowly returning to normal. CNMI Governor Ralph Torres in a statement says, quote, the Marianas is rapidly recovering and back in business to receive tourists. In his update, he says with the help of the Commonwealth Utilities Corporation, the Federal Emergency Management Agency and other federal agencies, quote, more than 50 percent of power and more than 80 percent of water production is restored to Saipan. While Tinian has seen 100 percent water production but still lacking full power, Torres expects to see more lights on Tinian energized by Christmas. With the holidays just around the corner, the Haza Foundation here on Guam is planning a Christmas fiesta. Hopefully we're going to charter a flight and bring um, the makings for a holiday meal. All the trimmings, the turkey and the ham, and um, just go and celebrate with them. I think the key is always trying to make them feel they're not alone. Pangalinen says if you want to help put together the holiday meal, you can contact her at 727-7717. Reporting for Guam's East Network, I'm Carmen Victoria Terlaki. Well, joining the community effort to help the families devastated by the super typhoon, DOE donated over $10,000 worth of supplies and monetary donations to the Azuta Foundation. Shipping supplies to Tinian, students at Guam Public Schools donated cans, coins, and other goods like baby wipes, baby powder, bath products, food, and clothing. The goods will be delivered with the help of the Tinian Premier Football Club. He is the presiding judge and the longest serving member of the Superior Court of Guam. Judge Alberto Lamarana is celebrating his 30th year on the bench and talked about some of the highlights during a speech before the Rotary Club. He says over the years, the court has always struggled to keep up with the volume of cases and a resulting backlog. On the criminal side, um, one of the things that we've been doing is we've been requiring judges to hear cases rapidly, like within one year, so many cases should be heard or at least be disposed of. Uh, for misdemeanor cases within six months. Um, therapeutic courts have helped a lot on that respect because it gives the opportunity for uh, participants to go into these programs and when they succeed, usually the cases are dismissed and expunged. Lamarin also served as a senator in the legislature before he was appointed to the Superior Court bench in 1988 by then Governor Joseph Atta. Well, trust me, everybody, you want to take a look at the artwork in this next story. From model homes to detailed turtle pieces, the local prison showcased its paper project program at the Mingilaw compound. It was all done by several of the inmates at DEPCOR, with prison officials saying this is part of the rehabilitation process for those that are serving time in the facility. Here's casework and counseling administrator Teresa Tayama. Day to day as they come along, it's while they while they prepare their, their pieces, yeah. they're able to talk and have discussions about certain things. So sometimes, you know, it's just the most therapeutic thing to be sitting in a relaxed setting, engaging in, in a common activity, and at the same time telling a story and having something that you can appreciate in the end. The inmates say it also helps them to pass the time. The prison plans to donate the artwork to Kaha for display. Get those dancing shoes ready, and yeah. then Gef Paku is putting on its third international dance festival at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse this week. Vibe out to the music, dance, and high energy. You can expect to see quite a performance by dancers from Finland, Mexico, Costa Rica, Argentina, Philippines, and of course, Guam. What our island can appreciate is, is not only to be able to see these wonderful cultures, but to also to be able to have a sense of pride of our own identity and our own uniqueness and how we are part of this global human, human race uh, and, uh, and how, we, how uh, the body language is the universal language of, 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 of the world. The festival is set for December 5th and 6th at 10 a.m. and on December 8th at 6 p.m. at the UOG Calvo Fieldhouse. Tickets are being sold at Foodies Shell or online at the International Dance Festival Guam 2018. Eventbrite.com. Now you know we love cultural dance here, yeah. but I don't think the Fortnite one is like one of no, them they're gonna do. You never know. Not. But yeah, oh. you're actually getting better at it. So. Oh, there you go. The running man is one of them though, oh, so we'll no, be back no, right no, after. No. <laughs>
Join the thousands who switch to GTA's handset payment option. Now I can get the freshest new phone at any time. My payments are based on my finances. No more contracts for me. It's time to get the phone I want when I want it. With HBO, I get to choose. <laughs> Call or visit GTA today to learn more about HBO, the most customizable phone plan on island. Only at GTA. Agent Alpha. What's that? An Alpha Insurance customer needs a claim settled immediately? I'm on it. Agent Alpha. In the event of an accident, theft, or breakdown, each of our Alpha Insure agents are trained to go above and beyond. This is my stop. There she is. Target acquired. Agent Alpha. Yes! At Island Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We get the show started tonight with some baseballs. The visiting team from Japan is ready to take on some local competition. Check it out. Baseball fans are invited to catch some international friendship games between Guam and Japan this weekend at the Leo Palace Baseball Field. Nanshiki Baseball started in Japan and is played with the rubber ball, just like Junko Baseball that was played between Japan and Guam before. The game is popular with children and the elderly in Japan with a player population of 5 million. Admission is free. First game of the day on Saturday is at 10 in the morning between Japan University and Nanshiki versus the Blue Jays. Game 2 is at 1 in the afternoon with the Japan University against the Rays. On Sunday, December 9th at 10 in the morning, the Chiefs take on the Japan University and Nanshiki. And then at 1 in the afternoon for Game 2, the Amigos will take to the Diamond against the Japan University. Tonight at 7 p.m., the Guam Masters Baseball Association will be meeting at the Fest Pack Pavilion across the Paseo Stadium. The association is holding an organizational meeting to discuss the upcoming season. The league is also accepting teams for the 35, 40, and 50-plus divisions. For more information, you can call Guam Masters Baseball Association President Dave Kitigua at 687-1769. Still Athletics held a fundraiser at their gym in Tamuni to help raise money for the shack in Saipan. Funds raised will go towards the rebuilding of the business. The gym collected donations at the door and featured a night of exhibition jujitsu, boxing, and kickboxing matches. The typhoon really devastated Saipan, and we wanted to send a little bit of money back to them. There was this place we'd always go to for the fights. Anytime there was the trench wars, we went to the shack. The shack, they would provide us food and drink. It was really unfortunate. I heard that their place pretty much got leveled. I saw some photos, and you know, it's just foundation now. Really sad for us, but uh, we wanted to be able to send them some money tonight. And uh, with the turnout that we've had, um, and you know, the bowl that we put out there, uh, you know, we we're really overjoyed with the turnout and then how much money we've raised so far. Turning over to some bowling news, Pat Roberto claimed the Guam Senior Bowlers Association November Senior Bowler of the Month title in two straight games over Rick Torres, 226-201 and 234-233. After the six-game qualifiers, Torres and Roberto held on to the top spots, earning the first round bye. For more information on upcoming events, you can contact tournament chairperson Rick Torres at 687-4291.
Shell's Million Miles giveaway is back, and we're giving 100,000 United Mileage Plus Miles to 10 lucky winners. So how do you make your getaway? Just use your Lucky 7 card when you fuel up with 7 gallons or more, and you're automatically entered to win. Fuel up at your nearest Shell station today and start planning your new adventure. No purchase necessary. Some conditions apply. See stores for details. MTO, professional janitorial services with a warm hospitality touch. MTO gives that gift year-round. Pressure wash roofs, pressure wash driveways, lawn service, home cleaning, carpet restoration, office cleaning, commercial cleaning, commercial window cleaning, floor care. When cleaning is in order, MTO has you covered. Call 647-6861 to inquire on how you can receive the maintenance you deserve. MTO, celebrating 30 years with you, Guam. Where can you find a burger inspired by flavors from near and far that mixes the smoky with the sass of the south? Combines the sweetness of summer with the tang of the country for savory, sizzling, unexpected flavors. Well, you can find it at McDonald's. The new bacon smokehouse burger. It's the newest flavor of the signature crafted recipes by McDonald's. It's back and bigger than ever. The big deal is going now at Triple J. Our best pricing on all new and used cars with no payments for 90 days. 1.9% financing on approved credit and a $500 gift certificate from Kmart or the Micronesian Mall. Get thousands off for the holidays on all new Hondas, Acuras, Fords, Mazda, Lincolns, Volvo, Kias, and used cars. Now is the time to come see the largest selection of brands on Guam during Triple J's biggest promotion of the year. Stop by Triple J or get pre-approved instantly online at TripleJGuam.com. Trade-ins welcome. Some conditions apply. See dealer for details. Triple J. Customers first. Over in beautiful Tumon, the ground floor of the Dusitani, and that is a big piece of real estate, Brie, was full of excitement and Christmas music for the big tree lighting celebration. A countdown by hotel guests and families alike led to the lighting of the hotel's majestic Christmas tree adorned with gold ornaments and decorations. The celebration featured musical entertainment from the Guam Territorial Band, a performance of the Nutcracker, a visit from Santa Claus himself, and face painting as the kids would say, it was lit. It was literally in, in more holiday headlines on Saturday. Many island residents lined up for the opening of the Friary Christmas display. The display, which is located on the second floor of the Aganya Shopping Center, features an array of Christmas villages, ornaments, Santa Claus, and more that is sure to get you into the holiday spirit. You can stop by from now until January 2nd from 6 to 9 p.m. Admission is absolutely free, but donations are always welcomed. For more information, all you have to do is call 472-6339. And as I understand it, that event is also, I mean, I mean I'm not using, using that word properly. I'm sorry, what, what did you say? Being lit. Oh, being lit. The, the, the events are lit. They're awesome. Okay, well, if I don't have a job tomorrow, then you know that I apparently wasn't. But if I'm going to go out, I'm going to go out reading tonight's birthday shout out. So here we go. Tonight we say happy birthday to Rosalina Lintag. Happy birthday from your Guam buddies. Enjoy your day. And there was only one. That's okay. Yeah. You can be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club. Yes, Just you can. Just head on over to our website and sign up. Once again, it has been too long since we've done this together. I know. It's been several weeks. Mm -hmm. I'm just kind of like standing here because I'm scared what you're going to do. <laughs> yeah, see, something, something's <laughs> never changed. Well, one thing that never changes is Carmen because she is awesome and she has got health, home, and lifestyle, and that is next. So please.